everybody, it's I, the Costume Corman, coming back from my second video. In this one, we're going to talk about glues and adhesives. Um, I've got a few samples set up here uh, that I did yesterday and last night, and I've allowed them to sit overnight. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show you each one and uh, how it looks and works for certain types of materials. And hopefully this will help you understand a little bit more about glues and adhesives when you build your costumes and your cosplays, especially with your props. I even got a, a little gun here with various things glued on it using different ways just to show you uh, what, what type to and what type not to use. So sit back, relax, and um, we'll get this started. This is probably going to last time that you're going to see me for a bit. You're probably going to see my hands more, but I hope it's, uh, I hope it helps you. So let's get started. Hi, right, welcome back everybody. Okay, so as you see here, um, I have several different glues in different piles. Um, I have uh, super glue, the Elmer's school glue, because that's pretty easy to get, and I've seen some people use them in their uh, cosplays and costumes. Gorilla glue, uh, which is an extremely heavy-duty industrial type of glue. Rubber cement, which is generally a universal go-to when it comes to uh, building costumes and cosplays. And then we've got the ye old hot glue, uh, which is where we're going to start with today. Now, uh, as you see here, uh, what I did was I took two very common ma materials, uh, well, three actually, uh, foam, uh, what some people would call vinyl strapping. This is the same material like you see with, uh, with the clips that people use for uh, straps for bracers or for uh, shields or, or even on pouches or whatnot. And then this other material here is like a, a cloth or a pleather, if you will. I actually cut it off of some boots. Uh, but the reason why I picked it was because it has a very good, um, a very good bit of malleability, and it also is extremely porous and absorbent, which is another thing that we need to talk about when we talk about glues and adhesives. So in this hot glue here, as you can see, I, I did this the way I did it because most of the time uh, when I see people use hot glue, this is about what it looks like. Now, I wanted to simulate someone hot gluing one of these pieces of straps uh, onto some fabric. Um, and because of the simple fact is, is I see this quite a bit. And the problem is, is as you see, as I pull it, it's starting to separate. And it's not taking me a whole lot. What happens is, is hot glue is really not a good idea to use um, on anything that you would uh, put a lot of stress or pressure on. Anything that would be able to move and bend and become malleable over time. Because when you use hot glue, it heats up, it becomes a liquid, and then you use it and it winds up becoming solid again. And the problem with that is, is unless the material that you use is extremely uh, porous, as you see here, it will eventually, as you saw, I just I worked that very lightly, and now it's just starting to just come off. And if you're using this as a strap and a pressure point to hold on to, like I said, like a bracer or a heavy shield or even something on a belt, it's going to come off. It's going to it's going to lift and separate and come apart on this. So now we're going to set this on the side. Now this one here is the same thing, hot glue, but on foam material. Now I wanted to give this the best opportunity that it had. I didn't want to show you this and make it seem like oh he's just uh, going negative on it. So what I did is a technique that I encourage anyone who uh, wants to use glues or adhesives on things that have a smooth or porous thing is take a piece of sandpaper and rub it a little bit until it breaks up on the surface and winds up becoming a little rough. 
that gives the adhesive more surface and grooves to sit in and actually wind up creating a stronger bond. Doesn't work with everything. It works with some things though. So here we have the same material, the strap, but on this time it's on foam, which is what a lot of props, especially things like I said, like shielding and bracers are made out of. And uh, I let this sit overnight and uh, I actually messed with it just a few moments before I started to um, film. And as you see, there was already just some separation here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to work this a little bit, um, which this pretty much simulates what would happen if you, you know, had foam or whatnot and you were wearing it and using it. Uh, and, and as you see, I'm pulling off these pieces on top a little bit here and there. And it's making these little pieces show up. So we're going to do this. And now we're going to see how it works. Um, oh, actually, that's got a little bit. Ah, there we go. So as you see, oh, see, it, it actually tore the material here uh, and stuck to the glue there. That's not the foam. That's the foam that came off with the glue. The glue actually pulled that. But once again, if this was a pressure point, or if this was a part that saw a lot of stress, this is what you would eventually have to do. And this is one of the things I said uh, about the cosmic rules of cosplay. Test, test, test. Um, this is why. Uh, like I said before, sometimes you have to use what you've got on hand. And if hot glue is what you have or what you can afford and you use it, uh, it, it's fine. There's ways that you can make hot glue work, not on a permanent basis, but even temporary. Um, like I said, uh, using the sandpaper to rough up the material, using things that are a little bit porous, letting it sit really well, uh, using a gratuitous amount. As you see here, this is not clean by any stretch of the imagination. So if this was going to be an unseen type of situation, this would work out well. But that's about what you see. And then what I have here is some hot glue on just two regular foam pieces. Um, and, you know, I, I use this over amount. Some of you say, man, that's a, that's a terrible, uh, he used a gratuitous amount <laughs> or a lot. I, I did this because I wanted to simulate what I see a lot when I'm doing costuming and repairs. And I'm so sorry for the low quality of the video here. I'm, I, like you, I'm using what I have, which is a web camera. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that you can get an idea of, of what I got here. So this is just hot glue uh, I used on a couple of pieces of foam. And uh, I'm not using a lot of pressure, but as you can see, it's, it, it, it pulls apart. And I've actually seen this type of technique used. Uh, people get a couple pieces of straps, they glue them, and they use them uh, for bracers uh, or um, parts to use on props on their arms or whatnot, or even on their legs. And unfortunately, this is what happens. Uh, hot glue is also not an evenly based adhesive. Uh, it tends to, like I said, it flows. See, I, I, you couldn't equally distribute it around and it creates pressure points. And uh, not only that, but a lot of foam too, when you use hot glue, believe it or not, depending upon how hot the temperature is, when it falls onto the foam, it actually melts it a little bit and actually weakens it. So it can create uh, less surface for it to hold on to. So that's hot glue. And now we're going to set those around and I'm going to get the next one set up. All right, everybody. Now we're going to talk about super glue. Um, so super glue is a incredible material, uh, an incredible adhesive to use. Uh, what I generally use is um, the Bob Smith Industries Maxicure, uh, which you can get on Amazon. And also I use uh, the Quick Cure stuff for it. It's called uh, Instaset. But those are the things that I use, um, plus other ones too. Uh, but those are the main ones that I use. Uh, when, when I go out and I do uh, cons and I have super glue on me, that's the brand and, and the um, Instaset stuff that I use. That way uh, it, I can apply the super glue and then use the Instaset and it automatically 
uh, starts to work on it. So for this particular, for super glue, I use super glue on uh, the strapping and the foam and on two pieces of fabric and then on fabric and strapping. And the reason why I used it in this particular instance is because when it comes to super glue, these are the primary ways uh, that I see. And so we're gonna start with the super glue on the foam and on the strapping. Now, right, right off, you can tell that if you're gonna be using super glue on foam uh, for let's say like costuming, right off the bat, you can see there it gets really hard and rigid um, and then when you start to bend it because this is what happens uh, if you use foam you're going to wind up having some give and take uh, it's going to become uh, warped or whatnot as you work it whether you sit down you stand up whether you pack it or not and then you see I it gets to a point especially on the edges and it's, it's loosening up, it's starting to break apart. And I'm not gonna pull it too hard because I don't want you to say, oh, he's, he's really pulling it. But let's say that you're using it and it does that, and then you wind up moving again, and you continue to move. And if this was a particular pressure point over time, you wind up moving a little bit, it winds up starting to separate, starts to come apart, and it, 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 it will wind up eventually uh, coming apart. So super glue also has is a particular chemical setup and some foams if you use super glue on it will actually eat uh, the material. Uh, you'll, you'll apply it and it'll start to break it down. And so you really want to test if you're going to use super glue uh, on foam you really need to test it. So the next up of, of what we have here is super glue on fabric. And as you can see, once again, um, it's pretty stiff. Uh, and we're going to give it a pull here. And as you can see, it is holding pretty well. But also, too, now we're going to work it. You know, let's say that you had this on, uh, let's say, like a, maybe a bodice or uh, a bracer on your arm, uh, maybe you've made some pouches, uh, maybe it's holding a prop, uh, the myriad of things that you do, it winds up getting moved, you pull the prop in and out, oh, see, and it's starting to come loose a little bit. And, you know, especially if you have it like this, and if it's load bearing or whatnot, it's gonna wind up pulling apart. And it doesn't have to pull apart a lot. Once it starts to go in certain places, Remember, it's that constant movement. And so as you move, it works. Now, will super glue work on fabric? Absolutely, it would. I mean, I'm showing it to you. It is. But unfortunately, it just gets to a point right where, see that? That was easy. And um, so you have to test. This is why I'm showing you this. Uh, test, test, test. <laughs> One of the cosmic rules of cosplay. Um, but oh good lord just so it gets weaker and it falls apart i wouldn't recommend uh super glues on fabrics uh, once again like over here like what i told you super glue can wind up destroying and eating some things so always test 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 on spare pieces of fabric um this is you know uh, now mind you this is also pleather this isn't sewn this isn't a, a fabric fabric. Um, that was something that I didn't have readily available was some knitted fabric um, like, uh, like flannel uh, or anything like that. I didn't have any spare pieces readily on hand when I was doing this. Um, I'll probably do that in another video in the future possibly uh, con continuing this because like I said, glues seem to be one of the biggest things uh, for issues and here we have the super glue on fabric uh, with the vinyl strap uh, once again we can see it's very stiff and we're going to give it a move uh, we're going to simulate some movement rocking back and forth walking through the dealer room squatting down to meet kids and taking pictures with other cosplayers you know all that fun stuff that that you do uh, when you're at a con 
and um, but it all simulates. Now, also another thing to keep in mind is is if you're wearing a cosplay, if you ever wore a cosplay, what's something that you always do? You sweat, um, and that sweat does not help glue. Sweat is something I'm not simulating here because, well, I'm not going to run in place for 45 minutes and then wipe it all over me. I don't think you want to see that either. So, uh, but as you see here, I worked it for a few seconds and it's just slowly coming apart now. And then once again, you know, we'd walk around the dealer room, eat some lunch, squat down, go to a panel, whatever, and then go back to, you know, doing our thing and oh, the rest of us just come off. So... The problem with using super glue on fabric and then using it on something that's not as porous is, as we spoke via before, it doesn't have enough surface to grab onto. It doesn't create a strong enough bond, uh, and, and it creates a bit of that. So that's what you see here. So those are the super glues on various fabrics. Uh, in the next section, we're going to get to the school and Elmer's glue, uh, which should be a little bit of a quick one. So I'll be right back. And welcome back. All right, here we go. So this is school and Elmer's glue um, or white glue. Uh, now it's clear. It comes in a myriad of colors now, but that's neat. neither here nor there. Um, but I see, uh, especially younger cosplayers, use this material and, or, or use this adhesive. And once again, I have the, 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 the straps on the foam and the straps on the fabric. And so uh, this is the Elmer's glue or school glue, depending upon because there's, there's, there's different brands, but it's all basically the same stuff. Um, and right off the bat, if we take it and work it, um, you know, like like we did with the other ones, just work that fabric and the or, or the or the strapping and the foam, and then there it goes. So, a couple of problems with this is just like in school, uh, you would uh, make a popsicle stick uh, picture. Uh, maybe with some glitter and a few other things, and you'd use uh, the school glue, and then you would take it home on a paper plate or um, a, a piece of construction paper, and you'd wave it around a little bit, you stick it on the refrigerator, and what always happened within a few days? Uh, some parts of it, would, I, mean, I didn't even barely <laughs> do anything, and that one came off. So the problem with school glue as an explanation, I don't want you to think that I'm just ragging on it, is it's extremely thick. Uh, it's, it's extremely thick ma material and or, or adhesive. I don't know why I keep saying material, but it's an extremely thick adhesive. And even when I used it on these two, what I did was I applied it and then I laid them flat between uh, two pieces of wood and uh, set... Uh, my obsidian on top of it to give it firm pressure to allow it to set properly. Um, so, but as you can see, it, it does not hold well. And I see this type of adhesive used a lot, uh, like I said, from younger cosplayers because that's what they have to use. Um, luckily, um, it's great if you're using it for uh, like adhesing. Uh, like paper pieces, like like if you're making um, a part of your cosplay out of con construction paper, or maybe you're going to try the um, paper mache route, right, where you're literally taking thin pieces of of, uh, of, of paper, like newspaper um, or, or or construction paper, and literally dousing it in uh, the school glue, and then applying it. To something and just a gratuitous amount because then at that point it's not about you holding the material together when you use that amount it's actually the glue setting becoming hard using the material as a guide and, and a way to form it and shape it and give it um, volume so that's why it works well on things like paper mache but it doesn't work well 
uh, as an adhesive to hold various materials together. It's it's a it works well on itself, but it doesn't really work well on other materials. So uh, I I wanted like like I said when I wanted to do this video, I wanted to be fair and I wanted to show some of the most common adhesives that I see. Um, and so there you go, school glue. All right, everybody, uh, we're going to end the video there. This is going to be part one. Uh, stay tuned. Part two is going to be coming up. Uh, in that one, we're going to be going over the Gorilla Glue, the Rubber Cement, and the Prop Gun. So, thank you so much for watching this, and remember, watch the second video, and uh, I'll see you again.